Hi, this is Pastor Bob Yandy, and welcome back to Student of the Word. We're taking up seven different areas of our life, amplifying our life, fundamentals of the life of faith, and today we're taking up the life of praise. Praise inside the church, praise outside the church, the purpose of it, because God has sent it to us for great power to bring us through trials, troubles, and tribulations, rejoicing on the other side. Wow, sounds good, doesn't it? Let's go to the Word of God. For more than 40 years, Bob Yandian has been an expositor of the Bible, making seemingly complicated doctrine easy to understand. Grab your Bible and study the Word of God with Bob Yandian. Hello and welcome again to Student of the Word with Pastor Bob Yandy and glad to have you here today. We are taking seven fundamentals of the faith and we have been through once on the new birth, being filled with the Holy Spirit. We've talked about all types of things in this. Today we're on number six and today it's on the fundamentals of faith is praise in your lifetime, your life of praise. And this will include praise in the church service, praise outside the church service. It's supposed to occupy every part of your life in everything with Thanksgiving we are told. So we're going to be taking a look at Psalm 150 if you want to open up there and take a look at it with me. And uh, I know we put it on the screen, but the point of it is you've also got a Bible there. It's great to open up because you can't underline on a screen. Uh, you can underline your own Bible. You can say, ooh, that's really good, or it's something can come to you. And so I highly admonish you. And I do news, use the New King James. So anyway, glad that you're with us today. And uh, if you're joining us for the first time, we really welcome you. And I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. And this show is just built around the Word of God. We take the Word of God and break it down into all the different uh, types, shadows. We go through all the different uh, fundamentals. I mean, there's so much things in the Word of God that we could honestly study it forever, then go back and study it again and find things we've missed the first time. And so I trust as I'm teaching, you may say, well, I know all about that. And then I'll get into something you say, I've never heard that. Well, that's good because that's the way my life has been. And I enjoy reading books. I enjoy hearing sermons and things, and they come from a different viewpoint. And even some I've disagreed with, I ended up agreeing partially with them or fully with them. I've actually had to change my mind, but that's just part of life. The only one who doesn't change his mind is God. So again, welcome to the broadcast. For you who are watching for number seven, eight, nine, ten, or 50 or 100 times, welcome, welcome back. Glad to have you. Psalm 150 says this in verses one through six, praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in or under his mighty heavens, praise him for his mighty deeds, praise him according to his excellent greatness, praise him with the trumpet sounds, praise him with lute and harp, praise him with tambourine and dance, praise him with strings and pipe, praise him with sounding cymbals, praise him with loud crashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. Let me just give you a summary of what this is saying. Praise him inside and outside the church. Praise him for his works. Praise him for who he is. Praise him with wind instruments. Praise him with stringed and percussion. Finally, and greatest of all, praise him a cappella. Everything that hath breath, praise the Lord. People praise God with their breath. And I think some of the most beautiful praise and worship is when the instruments stop and the people keep on praising God. And especially when they praise him in the spirit, praising him in other tongues and a huge congregation of thousands of people lifted up their voice, blending together and the different parts and harmonies come out. And you don't know what's being said, but who gives a rip? We are praising God and God understands. And when we praise him in tongues, he he understands in heaven what we're praising and we just get united, we get built up and we just walk out of there realizing something more than ever. God who created this whole universe and God created us, he can handle our problems. So we're gonna talk about the power of praise today because praise unites us as believers with each other, but it also unites us with all of creation. Because even though creation is under a curse, as our bodies are under a curse, listen, we've been redeemed from the curse. You're probably saying, well, I've been redeemed from the curse. That's in your spirit. You're being redeemed more and more every day in your soul because you're growing in the things of God. This is the renewing of the mind. But the body, it's got to be transformed one day, and it will be at the resurrection of the church, the rapture of the church. Until that day, we are in this body, but we learn to overcome it because this is where the nature of sin is. And the Bible talks about sin that works in our members. That's your body. And so it'll be there till you die. And once you die, then suddenly you're released from this uh, bondage of corruption, which is your body in the meantime again. But we can still praise God despite the fact that we have a human body 
we have limitations. And despite the fact we're still living in a cursed world, the world is cursed, but listen, nature still rejoices in the midst of all that. Psalm 69 and verse 34 says, let the heaven and the earth praise him, the seas and everything that moves in them. Psalm 89 and verse five, the heaven shall praise your wonders. O Lord, your faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. There we have it in the church and outside the church. The heavens praise him, everything that moves in them. Again, Psalm 89, the Lord is faithful and in the congregation of the saints, we can praise him. Isaiah 55 and verse 12, you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth into singing before you. Did you know that joy, praise, worship, and can lead to peace in your life? Because there's nothing like praise to put you in the presence of God. And it really is a great guide. It says you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. So praise and worship will uh, lead you. And then it goes on to say, the mountains and the hills will break forth into singing before you. This is yet to come as far as the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, but we can have it personally in our life. You can see nature like you've never seen it before when you begin to praise God. And nature stands out as a testimony to us. There's a verse in Micah that simply tells us, if you're about to trust God for something, go and and shout to the mountains. What does that mean? Look at the mountains and understand something. You're thinking your life is over. The enemy's going to come in. They're going to take your life. They're going to take your family. You take everything you have. Look at that mountain. It's been through everything. I mean, it goes all the way back. Wars have been fought. I mean, in our own nation, we've had the wars with the Indians. The Indians had wars with each other. We go back further than that. We go forward to the time period we're living in. We've had shoot and all the other stuff, but the mountains are still there. What does it say? Mountains outlast the curse. Mountains outlast all these things and will still be here into the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. Guess what that means to us? So will we. If God will preserve a mountain, which he did not die for, and Jesus didn't die for, he died for people, surely he's going to take care of us. Why, that should cause you right now to break forth into praise and worship. So why do we praise the Lord? Well, it's beneficial for our lives. Psalm 33, 1, shout for joy in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise is comely or befitting for the upright. God says it makes you look good. It's beneficial for your life. Why not put on clothes in the morning and also clothe yourself with the garments of praise? Praise is an act of faith. Know this is shout for joy. And it goes on to say there, and then to shout for joy and the comely and the benefits of the upright. Praise is an act of faith. It's a voice of faith before the answer is even seen. To praise him, now knowing the answer is on the way, knowing you're going to get out of this. You don't know how, but you don't care. God knows because he cares. And so it's a voice of praise before the answer is seen, a voice of faith. It settles our hearts before we pray. Pray and study the word and go to work for the Lord. But I'll tell you what, it's great to praise God before you study because the Holy Spirit that lives in you amplifies that word. The author of the Bible lives in you. And that's the beauty of it. It's pleasing to God for us to willingly praise him. Well, what about praise in church? We started out with that. Praise him in his sanctuary. Psalm 22, verse 22. I will declare your name to my brethren in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. Church should have praise and worship. And it's not to all be in minor keys and and dirges and things like that. It's to be uplifting and to praise God with a voice of praise before him. Psalm 35 and 18, I will give you thanks in the great congregation. I will praise you among many people. Only God's children can praise him. Psalm 115 verse 17 says the dead do not praise the Lord. This isn't the physically dead in the tomb, although that can apply. It's talking about the spiritually dead. They have no connection with God. They have not been born again. The Holy Spirit doesn't live in them. They don't have that channel through the Holy Spirit to praise God. So the spiritually dead as well as the physically dead do not praise the Lord. So we come to church with the problems of life, the problems of work, the problems of our home, the problems of our finances, the problems of our health. And in church, 
The praise unites us and turns our hearts in one direction toward the Lord. I've said this before to my congregation. Why do we start with praise and worship? I've had people in my church say, I don't like praise and worship. I just don't like all that. We want to go straight to the Word of God. Well, I can tell you this. It's tough to preach the Word of God even when everybody's in agreement because there's forces that come against me. I've got to pull my memory in. I've got to you know, speak to myself. I've got to keep up with my notes, yet not act like I'm looking at my notes. I have to be spontaneous. All these different things come to me, but I can tell you this, if it wasn't for praise and worship, I'd have a tougher time. Why? Because if you have a thousand people coming to church, you've got a thousand people thinking of a thousand different things and their problems are, are vast across there. They're all coming and thinking about the problems of life. So we've got a church divided among a thousand different ways. And the moment we start praise and worship, it all focuses together and everybody gets in the same order. Everybody gets in the same purpose of why we came to church. Praise and worship is like plowing the ground before we plant the seed. How important is that? Uh, so music up opens up our hearts. And in that we come before the Lord. You know, there was something said one time, and I remember this man was ministering and uh, he and his wife were ministering and they just mentioned each other because they were both musicians and they were ministering from the word of God on the foundation of praise and worship being such an important life, part of their life. And his wife said something. She said, honey, we've said this before. She says, and I haven't really proven it or looked it up, but she said, why is music in keys? He said, well, what do you mean? She said, well, this is in the key of A. This is A flat. And she went down, listened to the keys. And she said, why do we call them keys? Do they unlock something? And they both just looked at each other. She said, I've wondered that for a long time. Boy, did I start thinking. And my whole thing is, yes, they are keys. But yes, they do unlock something. I mean, I, there's now, I mean, well, I went and looked it up back then. I couldn't find anything on it. Did they open up something today? I, you know, in the days I'm living in today, I went to YouTube one day and just looked it up. Keys and their effect on you. And they literally had the keys, each key and what it was. And psychologically, what it opens up inside of you. There's keys that the moment it's played, peace comes. There's ones that they play on a certain key, joy comes. You can feel it. Solemn reflection comes in some. In fact, I've got some music on my uh, computer that when I start it, you know, it's just, it's just music to study by. It's just called study music. And there's different things that come through there and it's all played and there's no singing on it, just music. And I've noticed even when I did it again, that there's times I forget the music's playing. I'm concentrating on what I'm doing and it works. Colossians chapter three and verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. So he's saying here, when you study the word of God, it should also be stopping where you worship God, sing to him and thankful to what God has done for you in your life. Praise inside church teaches us to praise God outside the church in life. Psalm 150 verse one, praise the Lord, praise him in his sanctuary, then praise him in his mighty firmament, the firmament of his power under the stars at night and under the sky, the blue sky and the sh sun shining during the day. Praise him during those times because we can stand there understanding something. The sun's been here for a long time. The universe has been here for, we don't know how long, but the point of it is I'm going to be here. I'm going to outlast this problem. And suddenly as you begin to praise God, faith fills your heart in anticipation. God's going to bring me out of this. Whew, we could stop right there. We've had a great time, but you know what? We've got another 15 minutes. I'll see you right after the break. In Psalm 11, we are warned, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Believers who wish to grow in Christ must understand the foundation of doctrines on which our faith is built. Doctrines are not difficult to understand, but they often come disguised as complicated or deep sounding words, even when the definitions are simple. In 32 audio lessons, Bob Yandian simplifies these doctrines that bring strength and stability to a believer's foundation. Topics include redemption, predestination, sanctification, unlimited atonement, the flesh, resurrection bodies, baptism, the infilling of the spirit, and laying on of hands. This flash drive can be used with computers, MP3 players, smartphones, and tablets, as well as car stereos equipped with USB connection. To order foundations, go to bobyandian.com. Theology Simplified is a practical guide to foundational biblical truth. Basic doctrines are not difficult, but easy to understand. 
They often become disguised as complicated or deep-sounding words, but the definitions are simple. Pastor Bob makes complex theological concepts clear and practical. Eight crucial doctrines are demystified. Redemption, justification, sanctification, reconciliation, predestination, election, propitiation, and glorification. These eight precepts, essential for all believers to understand, come to light as you read and arrive at a deeper understanding of the finished work of Jesus Christ. To order Theology Simplified, visit our website at bobyandian.com. Bob Yandian Ministries is training up a new generation in the Word of God. Because of your generosity, this teaching ministry is able to change countless lives. You will never know until you get to heaven how many people received Jesus, were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed or found God's will for their life through your support and prayers. If you would like to become a partner with Bob Yandian, visit bobyandian.com and click on Partnership. Welcome back. And again, I want to welcome back those that are watching for the first time, those who've been watching for a long time. And I really want to welcome back those who are partners with me. You know, partners where two join together, three join together, partners work together. And if one can put a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight. We go on and on with the power of partnership in the Word of God. Jesus and his disciples were partners and they operate together. And Jesus often sent them out and in, he sent them out in twos. So we find out just the power of two working together. Two shall agree on earth as touching anything. All I can say is God gives me the sermons. God gives me the ideas. Is. God gives me the revelation, but I can't do it by myself. I mean, without you, I wouldn't have the TV equipment. That's the station I'm on right now. I just thank you for that. But the point of it is you're not just providing a television network. You're not just providing time. You are providing a platform for people to hear the word of God. My calling is not just to get people saved. My main calling is discipleship, to get those that are born again and get them growing. So if your heart aligns with that, and in fact, many of you, I've said this before, many of you watching right now, now know and have known for some time you're supposed to be a partner with me. You just haven't done it yet. Why don't you just go ahead and do it through your giving? I'm here to tell you people around the world, they're watching this right now, can be blessed and their life can be turned around and people that are looking for answers can find it during the broadcast. So again, I thank you for it. Go to my, my website, bobyandian.com. You'll find a place on there where you can become a partner with me. And I thank you so much for it. We were in Colossians 3.16 where it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spirituals spiritual songs with thanksgiving in your hearts to the Lord. Colossians 3.16 literally tells us the more we get into the word of God, the better our praise and worship should be. The closer to God we begin to come, more that we want to sing. We don't just sing psalms because we have to, or we sing hymns and spiritual songs because we see pressure coming. It can literally be a heart of rejoicing, looking back on all that God has done for you, then realizing if God has done all that in the past, he's going to take care of me. The God that has always taken care of me will take care of me now. So praise inside church teaches us to praise God outside the church. And we ended it before the break at Psalm 150 and verse one, which says, praise the Lord, praise him in his sanctuary and praise him in his mighty firmament. I've had questions given to me and by, by denominational people, literally the 33 years I pastored, I was asked to do uh, panel discussions and other things. And on one particular uh, day we had, you know, we with a number of ministers sitting there and we'd answered questions and, and we had Baptists, Methodists, we had Presbyterians. You go down the list, we've had some and uh, some that didn't even believe in the new birth. I mean, that was a difficult thing to get through, but they brought us there and they might, the way that the, the networks usually think when they invite you in, we want to get controversy going. This is what brings an audience. And after all, it's ratings. That's the number one thing, but I don't have no problem with it. I mean, I have no problem standing on the word of God. And uh, even when people challenge me and I tell them it's in the Bible, they say, well, we don't believe in all the Bible. Well, that's fine. And I know there are some out there that they don't believe in having instruments in church because it's not mentioned in the new Testament. Well, there's a lot of things not mentioned in the new Testament. We don't have an Ark of the Covenant. You know, that was in the Old Testament. We don't have that in the New Testament. 
And so things that were under the law, we don't have bulls, sacrifices in the church like they used to. And I can understand that. But instruments are taught throughout the Word of God, and we're going to find it when we look at, take a look at some scripture. I think of chapter 14 of the book of 1 Corinthians, where it's talking about in church. And it mentions the fact that while we are in church and we can have the gifts of the Spirit in operation, and it's talking about even if the trumpet plays a bad sound, well, where in the world did Paul think of a trumpet all of a sudden? I'm sure it was there on the platform. I'm sure the instruments were there. It's just not something that was mentioned. Now, they had seats to sit in in the Old Testament. They had seats in the New Testament. We just assume that because it's necessary, but there are people and there are denominations that don't have instruments in the church. In fact, I know some, I knew some ministers and they told me that and I said, you have any problems with your youth? They said, oh yeah, the youth are always wanting to have instruments. They watch these videos and they they go to these concerts and stuff and then they come back wanting to know why we don't have instruments in church. And so, so the point of it is, is praise and worship hasn't changed since the Old Testament, and it's going to be found in heaven. And we know there's instruments in heaven. The Bible records it. So why would we have it in the Old Testament? Why would we not have it in the New Testament and then have it again when we get to heaven? I think what went out in the Old Testament is still out today and won't be in heaven. I mean, we're not going to have animal sacrifices in heaven. And the things like I've just mentioned that were found back in the Old Testament, there won't be blood sacrifices, all those things, because we don't have them today, because Jesus went to the cross and ended all that. We're told that, that those things ended. And even when they were given, there was a time it talked about they would be over it, because why? The sacrifices spoke of the one who would come. Every sacrifice spoke of Jesus. And when he came, all that ended, because why? It was fulfilled in Jesus. And so, but praise and worship has not changed. In fact, the Psalms are even quoted in the New Testament. And God intended in the Old Testament to give instruction for praise and worship, especially Psalms. And that's why we can still enter his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. These are wonderful things found in the Old Testament that are still for us today. God enjoyed praise and worship before the world was ever created. When the angels were created, they sang Psalms unto God and and they sang praise and worship to him. And we even find out in the word of God that, that Lucifer was the leader of praise and worship, and God put all types of musical knowledge inside of him, even calling him the, the sound of the trumpets and the lutes and the lyres and all the different things that were there found in the Old Testament. They said they were found within Lucifer himself. He was the leader of praise and worship. So we have praise and worship before the earth was created, praise and worship after the earth was created in the Old Testament, and we also have the instruments today. We have those in church. And again, I believe that where Paul in chapter 14 of 1 Corinthians made reference to the trumpet and the cymbals and all those different things, they were right there in the church service. They accompanied it and it doesn't bring distraction. In fact, it brings tremendous asset and to praise and worship. I think what's interesting in the Psalm, we started with 150. It mentions all the instruments, but the last verse says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. The greatest thing we can do is with our breath, praise God. Instruments are fine, but they're made by man. But my voice was made by God. And this is in essence, God's creation singing back to God and I don't need a trumpet, I don't need a violin or whatever, but listen, there's nothing more beautiful than a trumpet or a violin when somebody who's anointed picks that thing up and begins to play it. So again, the Psalms are quoted in the New Testament. The Psalms are sung with instruments in the book of Psalms, and we are told that, but they're also sung without it. In Psalm 150, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. The greatest praise and worship I have to offer to God is from my lungs with my breath coming out of my mouth that God created all of those. And so we're told to sing Psalms. Psalms are sung with instruments, but hymns, look them up in the Greek. It says the Psalms are to, are sung with instruments, but hymns are sung a cappella. And again, all lining up with Psalm 150, we start with instruments, but we end up with everything that hath breath, praise the Lord. I can't think also of anything more beautiful than a cappella. People praising God with their voice without instruments as the congregation moves out and the instruments just fade out. And all we hear is the sound of people praising God. Yes, heaven's going to have instruments. In fact, we're told when they, when, uh, when John went 
went to heaven, he said the sound of heaven was like many waters. It is so loud there, it's like trying to talk at the bottom of Niagara Falls. You have to scream to each other to hear it. The sound of many waters is waters coming together. That's the sound of praise and worship from people, from angels, all those that are there in heaven praising and magnifying God. Instruments are made by God to be used for his praise. But instruments by themselves are not anointed, nor do they prophesy. The people playing the instruments are anointed. I was at one church one time, and they uh, they said, uh, in our church, we not only have tongue and interpretation by people, with the drummer up there will play a drum solo, then somebody will interpret it. And I said, you mean drums and interpretations? They said, yes, that's what we call it, drums and interpretation, symbols and present and that. And they mentioned different instruments that are played, played. And I said, no, 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 you don't understand that. When a person person gives the word. It's them anointed by the Holy Spirit, but instruments are not anointed. Someone else can pick up that that instrument and not sound as good, nor carry an anointing. Anointing comes from the people, and that instrument simply backs them up. Or the instrument can be played, but the anointing is still coming from the person who did that. I had a friend of mine that used to play rock and roll music. He told me he's one of the members of one of the greatest bands that they had in Detroit. And he said that he loved that. He says, and, and then I got born again. He said, I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I accept a call to the ministry. He says, I came to Bible school, and that's where he heard me uh, teach. And we became friends. And I went back up to his church one time and uh, spoke. But what he told me was, he said, when I was uh, in my house one day, I'd been pastoring for years. He said, I opened up and I got way back in the back of my closet. He said, there was my guitar back there. And he says, I look back there and there was my amplifier. He said, I pulled those out. And I said, you know what? I, he says, I used to be able to play this thing and literally sway thousands of people. I start playing, he says, and you can just feel the presence of that music. This is satanic. Going across the people. He said, I could control huge groups of people with that. And he says, I just wanted to see if it was still there. He says, I started playing like I used to. He said, you know what? It was gone completely gone. I couldn't do it. He said, the only thing I can get that's anointed is when I begin to worship God and praise him. He says, I have changed. Therefore, that anointing has changed. And he started mentioning the power of praise and worship. If people would understand the presence of the Holy Spirit, he inhabits the praises of his people. So instruments are not anointed, nor do they prophesy. I was at one church again, like I said, and they mentioned drums interpretation. You don't get that. That's not in the Bible. No, instruments are not anointed. The person playing it anointed is anointed. Heard the story of a little girl. There was a man that uh, quoted the 23rd Psalm and he was, you know, he was an actor. And I mean, every word was perfect. Enunciation was perfect. And the people applauded him after it was over. A little girl got up after that because she was asked to quote the 23rd Psalm. And she quoted by the time she was through, there was not a dry eye in the place. They said, oh, look, look at that. But nobody applauded. They were just crying. The, the presence of God was so strong. What was the difference? One man said it. He said, this man knew the Psalm. The little girl knew the shepherd. That's the difference. Praise should precede a sanctified lifestyle. I mean, it's out there in front. Psalm 50 and verse 23, whoever offers praise glorifies me and to him who orders his ways, I will show the salvation or the deliverance of God. Praise glorifies God and opens up the door and the pathway in front of you. How do I begin to praise the Lord? Psalm 95 and verse two, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, make a joyful noise to him with psalms. Psalm 100, verse 4, enter his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise, be thankful to him and bless his name. Psalm 30, verses 11 and 12, you have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness, so that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. And praise can bring you through the most difficult times. Habakkuk, chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. Though the fig tree should not blossom nor fruit be on the vine, the produce of the olives fall and the fields yield no food. The flocks be cut off from the fold and there be no herds in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. I'll see you next time. You can order resources, become a partner, or browse free articles and podcasts. You can also join our mailing list and receive weekly devotions and the latest ministry updates. Visit bobyandian.com. To contact us by mail, use the address on your screen. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We'll see you next time on Student of the Word with Bob Yandian.